with a new project started, we're just going to take a few minutes here to explore Android Studio's interface. So we'll start by taking a look at what each of these drop down menus provides for us in terms of brings to the overall project. Then we can take a look at the interface itself that we can see immediately. So take a look at these buttons and what all of this stuff means here. And then we can explore what each window does and provides to us as well as how to open and close the windows that we'll need. So hopefully you guys explored this interface a little bit, at the very least kind of checked out these drop down menus, otherwise we'll just take a few minutes to quickly um, go over the general theme behind each one. So this is general Android Studio project settings, you can change some preferences up here. And this will provide you a bunch of options to change just the general preferences behind Android Studio. So this is more than just the appearance, this is how it works, we can change stuff like notifications under appearance and behavior. We can install new languages and frameworks here. Um, or under our build, execution, deployment, maybe take in new tools, and even set up the uh, Kotlin compiler. Now, if you installed version 2 point something and don't have access to version 3, this is kind of where we would have to set up some of the Kotlin compiler settings. Okay, So if you want, you can give that a look through. Otherwise, we'll move on. Um, file just provides us some basic file settings, so the classic like start a new file, open a file, close project, open project, um, print stuff, export to HTML, so on and so forth. This is just general file settings. A lot of times what we'll have to do is change certain aspects of the project, such as the API level that we're using. For this we'll go into project structure, Okay, we'll have to go to app, and then from here we can choose different versions, like for example if I went API 27, I can choose that there. Build tools, I might want to choose version 27 when we go to run this guy. Flavors, um, there's a new window that provides uh, you the chance to change your SDK version and then the target SDK version. Generally speaking, you do want to make sure that these all match actually, so I'm just going to change all of mine to 27 right now. So 27 and then 27 up here. So generally when we change things like this, it's going to force us to rebuild our Gradle. I'll explain exactly what that means later, but the Gradle is kind of a way to specify all the dependencies of our project and it helps to connect all of the files and make sure that everything works well together. Okay, edit is just your classic text edit option, stuff like copy, paste, etc. Um, view is just a way to change a little bit about how Android Studio's view is looking. So we can toggle stuff like the toolbar, tool buttons, um, this kind of showing and hiding various elements. Navigate again is helping us to not just display things but navigate around not just again our individual files but around parts within each file. So for example we can find certain classes or symbols we can jump to other places within the code, okay, and it's just a way to change how we navigate through the project. Some of the options in our code drop-down menu have to do with the code itself. So, for example, we can comment code out, um, uncomment code, reformat code, change like indenting, and so on and so forth. Okay, analyze helps us to inspect and analyze how code is going to work together. So we can do stuff like analyze dependencies, clean up the code, um, inspect it to make sure there are no bugs, and so on and so forth. And refactoring is a way just to change some of these options. Okay, build has to do with when we actually go to make or build the project. This is basically to do with compilation. And then when we go to run it, these options are all in our run menu. So it has all the debugging options and all of the actual whoops, all of the actual run options up here. Tools just provides us some more general tools. We can link Firebase, and um, there's some Android tools here, some Kotlin specific tools. This is a good pl a good place in which to change Java files to Android if we want to, or to Kotlin rather, if we want to do that. Then we can just select the file we want, um, presuming of course it's a Java file, and convert it to Kotlin up here. VCS has to do with version control, probably not going to get into this too much, maybe towards the end if we have a little bit of time. Um, window has to do with the actual overall appearance of the window, so we can do stuff like change uh, the zoom, we can minimize the window and uh, change notifications and stuff. And then help just provide some general help topics, so if you have any questions then I'd, I'd recommend searching for help first, then going to the Android documentation and then maybe posting a question on stuff like Stack Overflow if you still have a question. So what about the buttons that are already attached to our toolbar here? Well, the first three just have to do with opening, saving, and I actually haven't even used this button before. Um, it's just a way to, I guess, synchronize things, which just helps to um, kind of resync the Gradle file and everything like that, make sure it's all working together. Your classic undo, redo, um, there's the cut, copy, and paste options. This just changes zoom. 
This is just a way to kind of go back. Um, if we want to go back to a different file that we were working on previously, this is our make or build button. I guess I should probably zoom in. Um, this is just a way to compile the project, make sure there are no immediate errors. This is a way to choose how we're going to run our project, so which part of the project we want to run. This is our actual run button. This will um, start running the project itself, but we need to attach an emulator. I'll get more into that later. Here's your debug option. Some of these will appear um, as slightly different when we are running or debugging everything, uh, our project here. Um, this is just attaching the app to a debugger rather than um, actually just running it here. This is the stop button, obviously grayed out because we're not running anything yet. Now this is our AVD manager. This is where we're going to manage and set up what are called Android virtual devices. So that's what AVD is short for and is essentially a way to access uh, the simulators that we have set up. This is a way to resync our Gradle file. Okay, This is the project structure so we can view the entire project structure as a whole, the hierarchy of the files. And now this is a pretty important one here. So this is our SDK manager. And so if we need to download additional SDK tools, then we'll click on this and then we can select the ones that we need. Alternatively, you could go to your Android Studio Preferences. And this is just under Android SDK under System Settings. So you do want to make sure that you have all of the correct SDK tools for the version that you're trying to use. In my case, I'm using API 27. I do want to make sure I have that tool downloaded and installed. It says installed here. But for example, I don't have version 3.0 installed because it's really not so relevant anymore. Okay, so make sure that um, if you are trying to run, especially the later versions, you do have the correct SDK tools downloaded and installed. Again, this provides more SDK tools and some sites in which you can update those, uh, those SDK attributes. Now, right below it, this is essentially the file hierarchy where um, we're going to find a particular file. And then within the file, what current um, class or method or whatever that we're currently working in. So this is the root directory. We're going to go into app source main java com example owl. The intro to Android is the root folder. If we open up app java intro to Android, this is here. And main activity is just stored within there. That's just a file that we have open. If we switch it up, then it shows our activity main and shows so it's just a way to show exactly which file we have open and where it's located in the project hierarchy. So that's pretty much the toolbar taken care of. What about these windows that we have open? Well, on the left hand side here, there's a few different options to choose from. So we can kind of toggle these windows open and close by clicking on the respective buttons. Okay, you can actually have multiple windows open. So in this case, I could have my project and my favorites open, but I can have project and structure open at the same time. Okay, so similar thing down at the bottom here, I can open up only one of these windows at a time. I think I can have event log and this open at the same time. I can indeed. And then kind of the same on the right hand side, so we can have Gradle and my device file explorer open as well. So what exactly do all of these windows do? Well, we saw that the one on the left, um, typically I like to leave it on the project setting, but is a way just to see how our overall project is structured. So we can see the overall structure. In this case, this provides the actual layout structure because we have the, the layout file open. But in this case, it's main activity and gives us a list of all of the methods um, and classes, etc. within the current file that's open. The project is just the project navigator as a whole and just gives us a list of the entire project file hierarchy. So you'll find various files that we need in various folders. This is the manifest file. Um, you know what, actually, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail now because I'd like to devote a whole section to exploring the file hierarchy and the project structure. For now, just know that's what it is. And there's a few different ways in which we can view that. Um, captures I don't really use so much, so we're not going to pay uh, too much attention to that. Again, favorites and uh, build variants don't use too much. Build variant is... Um, just kind of a way to specify or examine better whether we're running or debugging a project. Uh, whoops, we wanted to open that back up. And favorites, we can just kind of add to, um, we can just add certain items to this favorites folder. So if we have any breakpoints, we can create breakpoints in the project and it's just a way to view stuff like that. If we have anything bookmarked, again, just provides us easy access to the items that we want. All right, down at the bottom here, we have a few windows to choose from. This is a to-do window. If we have any to-dos within our project, so for example, if I type the word to-do and then some, you know, some actual task I should implement, then it will tell me what that is. It's a good way of just kind of keeping track of bookmarks or tasks that we have to still implement within our code. 
Logcat is where we're going to log any kind of messages. This is not showing up as anything because we're not logging anything right now. We're not running anything. And so um, there's nothing to display. Terminal is a good place to type in code. We can treat this just like we would any other shell or terminal. And then messages will tell us any kind of errors, warnings, etc. that might occur. Okay, oftentimes we'll also see stuff in event log, particularly if there are any errors, this will come up with um, kind of a red bubble instead of a green one, again, showing any errors. And the Gradle console is just a way to uh, keep track of all the Gradle processes that are happening. Similarly, you can examine individual Gradle files like this. Um, if you open up the Gradle tab on the right, or you can open up the Gradle script manually. I don't really explore this too much. Um, I tend to try to leave the Gradle alone as much as possible because it's kind of better that way. You don't want to be messing around with those projects unless you need to. And this is a way just to explore the um, device itself. So if we have an emulator that's running or a simulator that's running, then we can kind of look into the file um, hierarchy within that device by taking a look at that. Otherwise, this main window on the right hand side, so you can kind of extend this out, grow or shrink it, have it take up the whole view if you want. And this is to show which uh, files we currently have open. So in this case, I have access to two immediate files. I can open up more if I want, say I wanted my manifest file. If I wanted some um, kind of string file or something, I can open up as many of these as I want and it will show them in different tabs. Similarly, I can just kind of close them by clicking on the X. Um, our default is to have the activity file, the main activity, and then its corresponding layout file. Again, I'll explain a little uh, in greater detail exactly what these files are doing for the overall project. But just know that the one that's selected is going to be the one that's displayed in this main window here. If there are no uh, files open, we can actually close them all. It's just going to show us blank and says search for a file or open a file, etc. So in our case, we actually do want them both open. So we're just going to open up main activity and activity main again. All right, so that's pretty much it as far as an intro to Android's interface goes. What I'd like to do in the next section is take a closer look at the file hierarchy itself so we can start talking about how it's all structured and what these individual files are bringing to the overall project, how we'll use them, how they work together. So for now, what I'd like you to do is, again, just play around with a few of these. So do explore some of these options. Um, in order to run your project, just note that you'll have to connect an emulator. I'd like to do that not right away, but in a couple of sections from now. Probably best we understand the file hierarchy first. But a good place to start would be under preferences and just kind of changing how things look within your project. So maybe changing first the appearance and then trying to implement extra behaviors and stuff. So if you if you really screw up too badly, then you can actually just get rid of Android Studio and, and re-download it if you've completely and irreversibly messed it up. But I think that's pretty hard to do. So do play around for a bit. When you come on back, we're going to explore that file hierarchy. Okay.